Telefunken The German brand Telefunken was born at the very beginning of the 20th century as a result of cooperation between two large electrical engineering companies, AEG and Siemens and Halski. In the spring of 1903, after a disagreement between these firms over the wireless communication technologies they had developed, Emperor Wilhelm II personally insisted on the creation of a joint venture. On the 27th of May 1903, a company with a complicated German name Gesellschaft für Drahtlose Telegraphy, System Telefunken, which translates as Society for Wireless Telegraphy, System Telefunken, was founded. The headquarters were established in Berlin. The first technical director was Count George von Arco, who had previously worked at AEG. The name Telefunken combines the words Telegraph and Funken, spark in German. And it is not without reason as the first Telefunken products were related to spark gap radios. From the very beginning, Telefunken specialized in wireless communication equipment, radio telegraphy, for both civil and military applications. By World War I, the company had already deployed the world's first global radio communication network, competing with the British company Marconi. Telefunken supplied the German Navy and Army with radio equipment, including one of the first navigation radio systems for Zeppelin airships. For example, from 1908, the Telefunken Compass Transmitter helped airships navigate over the North Sea in all weathers. In 1912, Telefunken built a major radio station in the United States at Seaville, New York, capable of transmitting messages across the Atlantic to a station in Noren, Germany. Such achievements quickly established Telefunken's reputation as one of the world leaders in radio electronics. After the First World War, Telefunken did not slow down its development. In 1923, the company officially changed its name to the abbreviated Telefunken, Gesellschaft für Drahtlose Telegraphy. However, it was still a long way from the simple abbreviated Telefunken. In the 1920s, the brand became well known to radio amateurs and the general public. The firm built broadcast transmitters and produced radio receivers. One of the key achievements of this period was the creation in 1928 first two-stage hi-fi amplifier, the V41. This tube amplifier was characterized by extremely low distortion and set a new standard for sound quality. Building on its success, Telefunken continued to improve audio technology. For example, by 1950, the V72 amplifier was introduced, which was later used in recording. For example, these modules were used in the Abbey Road console on which the Beatles recorded their early albums. In addition to radio and sound, Telefunken early entered the field of television. As early as the 1920s, the company's laboratories were working on the electronic transmission of visuals. In 1933-1934, Telefunken became the first company in the world to begin selling CRT electronic televisions on the German market. At the same time, work was also being done on television cameras. A Telefunken camera based on the iconoscope was used for the live broadcast of the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Thus, by the end of the 1930s Telefunken was involved in all key areas of radio electronics, from household radios and gramophones to professional amplification equipment and the nascent television. By 1938, Telefunken had already employed 23,500 people, which shows the volume and success of the company on the eve of the new war. With the outbreak of World War II, Telefunken, like many German companies, switched to the needs of military defense. In 1941, Siemens' share of Telefunken's capital was bought out and the firm became a wholly owned subsidiary of AEG, although cooperation with Siemens on a number of technologies continued. 
During the war, Telefunken remained the leading developer and manufacturer of military electronic communication, radar, and radio control systems. Its laboratories produced air defense radars and even remote guidance systems for guided weapons, such as the KEL series. Telefunken became one of the third Rye centers of high-tech research, also producing vacuum radio tubes, radio transmitters, and receivers. However, the war also caused enormous damage to the company itself. Telefunken's factories suffered repeatedly from Allied bombing, and production had to be evacuated from Berlin to the east of Germany, in Thuringia, Saxony, and Silesia. Many factories ended up in the Soviet and Polish zones of influence and were lost. Telefunken's Berlin headquarters burned down during wartime. By the time Germany surrendered, Telefunken's fate hung in the balance. Some key facilities had been destroyed or removed as reparations, staff had been dispersed, and ties with parent AEG had been severed. And nevertheless, the brand survived the war. Despite heavy losses, Telefunken managed to revive itself in post-war Germany. Fatefully, one of the main pre-war factories, in Berlin's Zellendorf district, was in the American sector and survived. As early as the late 1940s, Telefunken restarted production of radio equipment and in the early 1950s moved its headquarters to West Berlin. The company had to abandon the military theme and concentrate on the production of household appliances. Thus, Telefunken began to produce car radios, which were equipped even with prestigious Mercedes-Benz cars of the early 1950s. Under the Telefunken brand, home radios, loudspeakers, and the first mass-produced tape recorders were produced. West German families highly appreciated the sound quality of Telefunken, its tube radios, for example, popular models of the late 50s operette and opus, set the standard for hi-fi in the era before the advent of transistors. In the early 60s, Telefunken was experiencing a true golden age. The company not only made a successful recovery, but also regained its status as a technological leader. Telefunken is credited with introducing FM radio broadcasting in Europe. Even before the war, the company's engineers experimented with frequency modulation, and after 1945 Telefunken actively developed the FM network, becoming in fact the pioneer of this broadcasting technology. In 1955, the company changed its legal form to Telefunken GmbH and in 1963 to the joint start company Telefunken AG, reflecting the company's growth and overall business development. One of Telefunken's greatest achievements of that period was the invention of the PAL color television system. Company engineer Walter Brook presented the PAL standard to the European Broadcasting Union in 1963. And from 1967 PAL was adopted in the Federal Republic of Germany and soon became the dominant color television standard in Europe, Asia and other parts of the world. Almost all countries except France and the USSR, where other systems were chosen, switched to PAL, which brought Telefunken worldwide prestige in the television industry. Commercial successes kept pace with technological successes. By the turn of the 1960s and 70s, Telefunken factories had produced the 2 millionth tape recorder, Magnetophone series bobbin recorder, and the 10 millionth television set, black and white. The Telefunken brand was firmly associated with quality radio and video equipment. Not only radio and TV receivers, but also stereos, loudspeakers, record players and later cassette recorders were produced under this brand. The company's audio equipment was a serious division. It got to the point that in the 70s Telefunken even created its own noise reduction systems for sound recording, Telcom C4, Highcom and others, competing with Dolby. At the same time, the firm invested in semiconductors, opening a transistor and chip factory in Heilbronn. 
All this made Telefunken a powerful diversified electronics player. In the wake of its success, Telefunken underwent a structural change. In 1967, the parent company AEG decided to integrate Telefunken fully into its structure. The merger took place and the AEG Telefunken Group was formed. The headquarters of the merged company moved from Berlin to Frankfurt am Main. The Telefunken brand did not disappear, on the contrary, it stood next to the name AEG in the name of the concern, emphasizing the importance of the brand. As part of AEG Telefunken, the company continued to produce electronic equipment in various fields, from household appliances to computers. For example, it was in the bowels of Telefunken in the late 60s was developed one of the first German computer, Computer TR4. Later came the TR440 model, a more powerful version used in universities in Germany. And in 1968, Telefunken engineers invented a ball mouse type manipulator, Rollkugel device. This invention became one of the first ball mice in the world. However, the main revenues continued to come from the consumer sector, radio and television equipment. Telefunken remained one of the pillars of the German electronics market, competing with such local brands as Grundig, Saba, Lowe, and, since the late 1970s, with Japanese giants like Sony and Panasonic. Everything was going very well, but, as it happens, the rapid development slowed down. Closer to the 80s, the first warning signs began to appear. AEG felt financial difficulties, as the global competition in the consumer electronics market was growing rapidly and European companies began to lose market share. As part of AEG Telefunken, a subsidiary company Telefunken Fernser und Rundfunk was created, focusing only on the production of radio and television receivers. Other Telefunken divisions were involved in professional electronics, defense systems, and industrial automation. The management tried to divide the divisions in a sensible way so that the work could be done more efficiently. But this restructuring only postponed the problems. The Telefunken brand continued to produce new TV models, high-quality audio systems and tape recorders, but profits were declining due to the influx of cheaper appliances from Asia. The 1980s were critical and in many ways dramatic for Telefunken. This strong German brand finally lost its independence. AEG's financial situation was deteriorating, and in 1984 a significant decision was made. The French concern Thomson CSF acquired the Telefunken Fernser und Rundfunk division from AEG, the one that focused on consumer radio and TV. This meant that the Telefunken consumer brand came under the control of Thomson, the French state-owned electronics manufacturer at the time. The French were looking for a way into the German market and seized the opportunity to buy a well-known German name. The Telefunken takeover came shortly after Thomson's failed attempt to acquire Grundig and resonated in Germany. Many perceived the transfer of a legendary brand to foreigners as a national loss. Unfortunately, the fears proved to be justified. After 1984 Telefunken actually stopped its own development and production in Germany. The Thomson concern was primarily interested in Telefunken's trademark and distribution network. Telefunken still produced TVs and consumer electronics under the trademark Telefunken for some time in those years, but it was already unified with other Thomson brands. The French owner organized business optimization, reduced staff in Germany, and the legendary Telefunken factories in Berlin closed one after another. At the same time, the parent concern AEG, having lost its key consumer assets, did not last long. Its remnants were absorbed by Daimler-Benz in 1985. The name AEG Telefunken was shortened to simply AEG and then disappeared from the stock exchanges altogether. Thus, by the end of the 1980s the Telefunken company ceased to exist as an independent manufacturer of consumer electronics.
It should be noted that the name Telefunken continued to live as a trademark in other segments. As part of AEG there was a semiconductor division Telefunken Microelectronics, later Temic, which produced microchips, but it too was acquired by Atmel in 1998. The joint venture Teldec, Telefunken and Decker, known as one of Germany's largest recording studios and record manufacturers, was sold in 1988. No Telefunken branded radio and video equipment manufacturing plant remained in Germany. After 1990, Telefunken became a brand without its own company, whose fate was determined by license agreements. The rights to the trademark were taken over by a specially created company Telefunken Licenses. Since the 90s, a wide variety of electronics products produced by third-party manufacturers have been sold under the Telefunken brand name over the years. For example, in the 2000s, Telefunken returned to the shelves in Turkey and Europe for a while. Since 2006, the Turkish holding Profilo Telra produced Telefunken LCD TVs under license. Then the cooperation stopped, and the rights to produce TVs were transferred to another Turkish giant, Vestal, which still produces TVs under the historical brands for the European market. Thus, TV sets with the Telefunken logo exist even nowadays, but their stuffing is from Turkish and Chinese OEMs, not from the German innovative engineers of the past. Interestingly, the Telefunken brand was revived in the audio sphere. In the early 2000s, Telefunken USA, later renamed Telefunken Electroacoustic, was registered in the USA. It acquired the rights to the famous Telefunken diamond-shaped logo and started producing sound equipment, replicas of vintage tube microphones and other studio equipment that made Telefunken famous in the middle of the 20th century. These products are addressed to professionals and connoisseurs of retrosound, but the widespread distribution never happened. By the 2020s, the Telefunken brand is still very recognizable and is therefore used by license holders in many consumer electronics categories. Today, the major rights to the Telefunken brand are held by investment company Gordon Brothers, which bought the brand from the previous owners in 2023. Gordon Brothers' strategy is to develop Telefunken as a globally licensable brand. In other words, the miraculous revival of real consumer appliances from the famous German brand has not happened yet. Nevertheless, the assortment of Telefunken partners today includes TVs and simple audio equipment of medium level. Also these days the brand produces large household appliances, refrigerators, washing machines, lighting equipment and even electric transport. In fact, Telefunken has become an umbrella brand for a wide range of products enjoying a more than century-long reputation for reliability. As a result, Telefunken's history has come full circle. From a brilliant rise in the era of the birth of radio and television, through the pinnacle of innovation in the mid-20th century, to decline at the end of the century under the onslaught of competitors and changes in ownership. Today, all that remains of the original German company is its heritage and legendary name, which can still be found on electronic devices. The Telefunken brand has outlived its company and has become a symbol of the era when German engineering thought determined the development of radio, hi-fi, and television. Now the brand is managed by license holders, trying to preserve its prestige. Telefunken repeated the fate of many great brands of the past, it failed to survive the market race, was absorbed by bigger players, but its name lives on, but in a very different form than in its heyday. So, another video has come to an end. I kindly ask you to subscribe, like and support the channel. This will help us continue to produce high-quality original content.